In this video, you're going to learn how to create custom text effects that are fully editable in Adobe Illustrator. Rightio, first create an artboard that is 600 by 300 pixels. And if I go up to the swatches panel, you can see I have four global swatches here. And you can download this file in the video description if you'd like to follow along. And if you don't see the swatches panel, go to window, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you can enable it from here. Next, select the type tool and then click anywhere and type some text. Once you've got your word, the next step is to pick a font and then customize the font settings. So for this tutorial, I'm using the font Visby, but you can use any font you like. Now let's make this text nice and big. I think 130 points should do it. And then let's center the text both horizontally and vertically. Next, we're going to enable another panel. So go up to Window and down to Appearance. From the bottom of this panel, click this icon to add a new fill. And then from the drop down, we can pick one of those global swatches. I'm going to go with the really, really light gray, almost white, but not quite. And then I can click this icon to duplicate that fill and change the color of the bottom one to the darkest of those four swatches, which is like a super dark purple. Next, let's click the effects icon and go to path and select offset path. I'm going to set this to five pixels, but you can make this thicker if you'd like a thicker border. Now let's go to distort and transform and select transform. So we're now going to move this horizontally and vertically one pixel, and then we can set the number of copies to something like 10. So what we've done is use the path offset to create the outline, and we've also used transform to offset this with 10 copies, one pixel down and one pixel to the right. Now we've done that, let's duplicate this again and then change the color to that mid purple swatch. Now, of course, it's at the bottom of the layer stack so we can't see it, but if we expand the options down and click on transform, we can now increase the number of copies. And because we've defined the offset already, all we're doing is really piggybacking off the work we've already done and increasing the number of copies. And by increasing this value, that mid purple is eventually going to start to show. Now with said purple selected, let's duplicate this again and change this next one to the lighter purple. And exactly the same again, expand down the options, click on transform and bump up the number of copies. And these values can be whatever you like, but I'm trying to set mine so all of my purples are a consistent width. Let's close this panel down for now and select the rectangle tool and add a background. And if you try and move this into position and it doesn't snap, you'll need to turn on your smart guides with command or control U. You see, there we go, much better. Let's increase the size so it fills the entire artboard and then right click, go down to arrange and select send to back. Now from the swatches panel, let's just select the darkest purple for now. And then if we select the text again and open up the appearance panel, we can now carry on. Let's go ahead and add another new fill. You can see it adds it at the top by default, but we're going to need to drag this to the bottom of the layer stack. And then let's set the color of this to white, but not quite. And of course it's on the bottom, so you can't see anything. So let's go and add an effect. We'll go to path, select offset path, play around with a few different values here. So we'll go for 10, nine, 10. Yeah, we'll go with 10. Now, as you can see, the offset alone doesn't really work and it's still behind all of the other fill layers. So to make sure this white border encapsulates our entire design, we need to add another transform effect. Again, move this by one pixel horizontally and vertically, and then increase the number of copies. And as you do this, you'll start to see the border gradually encapsulates more and more of the design. Now this is right in principle, but it's looking a bit janky and inconsistent around the edges. However, there is a fix for this. But first, let me demonstrate with the type tool that this text is still editable, which is just great. What's not great though, is that we need to make this text non-editable before we move on. So to do this, go to type and select create outlines. Next, select the direct selection tool and then if you click and drag on one of the control points, it rounds off the corners of your text, which miraculously fixes all of those issues. No more janky edges and the border width is consistent. Now, if you can keep your text live and editable, great. But if not, just make sure you're happy with your word and your font before moving on. Now, I'm just going to spend a couple of seconds tidying up this design. There we go. Very nice. Next, with the text selected, go to effect down to distort and transform and select free distort. And if we grab both of these right control points and move these up, we can skew the text out of shape and make it look like it's on an angle. And then once you're happy, click OK and oh, no, oh, that's not right. OK, so if this happens, don't worry, go to the appearance panel and just make sure that you select the group before applying the effect. So let's go and add the free distort effect again. And there you go, you can see it gets applied to everything. And this effect is listed here if you'd like to change or delete it. Lastly, I'm going to select the rectangular background and open up the gradient panel. Click anywhere on the slider to add a gradient and set the type to radial. And if you double click the white swatch, navigate to swatches, you can then add that mid purple 
and then double click the black and set this to our super dark purple. You can now move the swatches or the midpoint on the gradient slider to fine tune the gradient. And if you click this drop down here, you can reduce this value from 100%, which will squish down the gradient instead of it being a perfect circle. Lastly, go to object, lock and selection to lock the background in place. Let's pop the final design perfectly in the center. And there's our final design. And even though the text isn't editable anymore, all of the appearance effects, the global swatches, etc. Well, they all are. So that wraps up this video. And if you like more text related shenanigans, well, I've got a couple of videos on screen that I think you'll really enjoy. But as always, you've been absolutely fantastic. Take care and I'll see you next time.